This episode on Sailing Papau, we haul out for some emergency repairs. That's why they call it an easy catamaran. Well, <laughs> And cram in as many jobs as we can fit into one week. Splash day, and she's looking pretty good. Look at this budding filmmaker just doing the job. After bending our rudder in a storm last episode, we were making our way up to Redland City Marina to haul out and fix the damage. We also had our mate Evan from Sailboat Kinta joining us for the haul out. Oh, catamarans and monohulls shouldn't play together. <laughs> Evan's following us in, he's on the bottom. We did tell him it was too shallow uh, for him. <laughs> Yeah, we told him it was 1-4 but he thought he could just give it a little nudge. It seems like he's moving still. There's Evan. Still trying to be a catamaran. Sneak in a bit earlier. Just waiting on the bottom, just chilling out. Another season out of it. <laughs> yeah, see the rudder? Wedged against the uh, hull. And we chopped the block, were you? Yeah, crazy. We ran out of steam. <laughs> what are you putting us on? <laughs> no, I've got steam for you. <laughs> Welcome up to our first day in the yard. We had a day off when we get in, got in yesterday. <laughs> um, we're just taking the rudder off now. So we've spoke to Peter Snell. He reckons we can just bend that rudder back, hopefully. So we're thinking of putting a ratchet strap around the base of the rudder and around the mini keel and just, just bending that uh, rudder shaft forward a little bit yep. because it bent backwards and not sideways, which is good. So before we do that, I just want to take the rudder, drop the rudder down a couple of inches just to inspect where it joins the rudder. So I've just disconnected the two tillers from each other and then taken out the two securing bolts that hold the top of the rudder. So you can see here, see how that's wedged right up against the keel? It's rubbed all the anti-foul paint off there. So that's actually meant to have about, I don't know, fingers worth. So this is the good rudder, It'd give you a bit of an idea. You can fit your fingers like right up there. No issues, so that one's perfectly fine. And then this one is fully wedged. So that's what's giving us the issues when we steer because it's rubbing on that. So we've just put a block on top of a pail. I'm gonna drop that down now. Ready when you are. I don't know if it's gonna drop very easily when it looks All right, so Michael's just hammered the shaft down. All right, so I have rigged up. We've dropped the rudder. There's no damage on the inside. Uh, it's still just riding up because it got bent backwards like this. And it's just contacting here when the rudders are straight. So, spoke to Peter Snell and he reckons that all we need to do is just bend it back down a bit really. And we could even just shave the back corner off if you wanted, but uh, he said get a crowbar and just try to pry it out but so I've set up a sling instead of a crowbar so we don't damage the hull at all 
So it's got a soft sling here and a heavy duty ratchet strap. We've just wrapped it around the mini keels. And I'll just crank it up slowly and hopefully straighten the rudder. So that's already made a difference there. Two clicks of the ratchet. Huh? We've all got like five mil. I just did two clicks of the ratchet and it already bent it a bit. So it's pretty close. A bit more of a gap on that one. Couple more, I reckon we've got it. That looks pretty even. It's pretty good. Have a look at the gap, tell me what you think. Not that side, this side. It's mainly this bit that needs to be flush. This doesn't matter. Don't put your finger in there. One more, you reckon? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that, that's about even. Okay. Rudder unbent. Yeah, so it's gone back a fair bit already. Like, but I think it's good. <laughs> That's amazing. Look at that. Simple. That's why they call it. Oh, watch out. There's stuff on there. That's why they call it an easy catamaran. Well. Hey! <laughs> Done. Should we go a bit more or? Yeah, uh, I'm thinking so. I mean, go. That, I could fit my. That finger in. Don't worry easily. about that gap, as long as that's clear, as long as this is flush. Okay. So it's like maybe we can go one extra. Yeah, because it obviously bends back. Yeah. Just giving the boat a bit of an acid wash, trying to get all the um, corrosion off all the fittings easier than scrubbing it, and also just like the lines all over the boat. Um, basically, you just mix it up. It is an acid, so. Make sure you wear a mask. Uh, that stuff is horrible to breathe in. I've breathed it in before when I worked on commercial boats and it was not nice. It feels like your lungs are on fire and probably did damage to me, but very careful this time. It's looking a lot better. So that one's done. It's so much shinier. I've got this one working away. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes, so pretty good spray it on leave it there don't let it dry otherwise it can actually damage the paint and make it dull but we are polishing the boat after anyway so I've got to do that then I'm going to give the boat a full uh, wash down with a gurney and soap it all up get it nice and clean that way it'll be ready to polish when uh, stops when Michael's ready basically it's ready to be done and then um, I'll probably start on the bottom getting the anti ready anyway that's the wash for now we have a little stowaway on board. The cutest little green tree frog you've ever seen. He's so cute. I might just leave him there because I don't want him to jump on the acid all over the boat and hurt himself. So give him a hose and leave him. Michael's just standing back the antifowl and just to make it smooth because we're going to prime all of these again because um, a lot of it just comes off around the water line so we're trying to get as much of that roughness off. In the meantime I'm just going to service the engines. So just uh, ran them for a couple of minutes. Yes I did have water flowing through them. A lot of people commented on the last video. I'm not that dumb. I know that there has to be water going through them. So yep we gave them a flush, heated up the engine. I'm going to go drain the oil now. drain the leg oil and then I'm just going to um, swap out the fuel filter and then um, fill it up with oil and leg oil again. 
Okay, done. So, done the leg oil on both engines now. Pretty easy. And I've just put uh, new oil in and new fiber washers. And I also just got new anodes, so I might put those on now. These are well overdue. Not much left of that I know either. It's just crumbled apart in my hands. So we'll swap those out and I'm just gonna give them a bit of a clean up now with a bit of get all the leftover crap out. Put the new ones in. Okay, so that's the old anode. This is the new one. Not much left. guys over at TMC Workshop have been really good to us. Um, they're just behind the yard and they've been really good supplying parts. I've got a big range of stuff, especially for our Yamahas because they service them a lot. Um, they usually just do servicing, but they also do do the spare parts and I've gotten a lot of advice from them each time I service these engines, but they basically said if we can give these engines a good hose down once a month it'll stop them rusting as much because they do get quite salty just because we can't flush them yeah we can't flush these engines very well because the flush is at the bottom so we can't really do that uh when we're on the water so they get flush literally once a year so what we're going to do i'm just going to take the covers off now give them a good hose um get all the salt off the engine and then when that dries in a day or probably like lanolin or something just sort of protect it a little bit but yeah you can see from the other night we've got quite a lot of water in there and that which is just like surface rust so I'm just gonna give it a good hose and maybe a bit of a scrub day two we have one hull prepped we're gonna finish I'm gonna finish this hull today Michael did the other hull yesterday while I serviced the engines and Michael's just started on the polishing today. It's a big job. I can't do that one because it gives me a really bad carpet tunnel, but yeah, pretty getting there. So we're just wrapping up day two. Fairly unproductive one, uh, unfortunately. We've had a lot of people drop by today, which has been very strange that they all came on the same day. And then we also had a power outage because a tree fell over the power lines up the road. So literally all I did was hand sand one hull because Michael did the other one yesterday. And I've just put the vinegar on, which I forgot to film, which is basically just this paint, which goes over all the bare hull. And then I also got some in my eye. So that was extremely painful. It's the worst stuff to get in your eye. It's got like cancer warnings all over it. I just had sunnies on and I, it was under the hull pain. So like the worst, like that's the most likely place I'm gonna get it. And I just took my sunnies off out of habit. And of course, that's the only time I got anything on my sunglasses and they went on anyway. So that was painful. I washed my eyes out for like 20 minutes under the tap. That's pretty much concluded my day. So Michael finished a quarter of a hull polishing like that's how much we didn't get done today but it's looking really nice and shiny day three very slow start to the day today we are just doing a few odd jobs around the boat i'm putting the vinegar on the side of the hull that michael was polishing yesterday i'm just waiting for it to dry to vinegar it which is the silver stuff and I'm gonna do another layer and a couple of the spots here that are quite thick and a bit I missed yesterday which is covered in anti -cup. Michael's just end for ending the chain we've got these little duvelacks to try out they go in the chain link so instead of spray painting the chain you can put these in and they mark the length of them um, a lot of people say they fall out but I've a lot of people say they don't as well, so mixed reviews. We're going to give them a go because the paint just wears off. If these last six months, they'll be better than the paint. Day four or something like that. I'm not actually sure where we're at. 
didn't film much today. Um, Michael was busy finishing an article for Spearing Magazine. I finished the polishing and prepared the hull. They are completely ready. We'll probably Andy fell in the morning. We're going to do it this afternoon, but we just got sidetracked. Um, got sidetracked by a bit of rot that I found. I was actually just hosing out these because I wanted to um, repaint them. Um, we painted them last time and we didn't put primer on and basically they were just already half painted so we're going to do it properly this time because we've got the time now. We've also degreased the engines um, just because these engines get flogged, they get salty, we never get to rinse them because you just can't with this setup. Um, so we've degreased them and we're just rinsing them off with fresh water now. And then this is our fuel compartment. Now the problem is we always have fresh water pooling here, which I've never been a fan of. So I've decided I'm going to sand that back now. Um, I did already on the other side and I found a bit of rot. So I'm going to sand them right back, epoxy them, fill it in. I'm just waiting because our neighbor's just done some painting. Um, so I'm not going to sand yet until later tonight. And then, yeah, this is the rot. Just a little bit in there, nothing too bad. This was the worst part. So I've just chiseled that out. I send that back tonight and then yeah, I'll just fill that in tomorrow. Um, pretty easy job now that we know what we're doing. But yeah, good to catch it early. And Michael's also taken the starter motor off, the starboard engine, because this is a fix up from last time. Um, probably end up getting a new starter motor at some stage, but about $300, so that one still works fine. Not that much. I thought they were two. Oh, okay. Well, we might get a spare one, but it still works. But we've just been fighting the battle of corrosion ever since. So, wrapping in Denso. Wrapping in Denso. Anyway, that's the day four wrap up. The midges are out. It's time to hurry up. Yeah, day four. Already. <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday. Five. Day five. Huh? There you go, we missed a day. Wow. Yeah. Bunning strip to my low mode for you, Michael. Uh, he's back back in the pooper. He has to take the base of the toilet off because we can't get the macerator off. It's like look how close it is. It's, it's Freaking five mil too short. What? I don't understand. Can't you just take it off there? No, because I've got to unscrew this motor mm. from in there. I can't do that unless that's off. So I have to take the whole toilet pipe, unsickerflex it from the base, which I sickerflexed it so well last time that I thought, because I would never want to have to do, deal with it again. And now. Didn't. Didn't. You, I didn't what, think... you put that on with the macerator on it or something? Yeah, all in one unit. Mm. It's freaking gross, like. And now I and now I've got to pull my hands. It's disgusting. Something so simple. The next morning, we got stuck into our first coat of antifoul. We're using Jotun Sea Guardian. We'd managed to squeeze about 18 months out of our last can, so we were happy to use it again. And with that, we were nearly ready to go back in the water. Splash day, pretty excited. We've been on hard for a week now. We've done well, we did everything we wanted to do, plus a few extra things. And she is looking pretty good. We're just filling up the water tanks now, and then about to splash. They're just about to come pick us up for a few hours and we'll touch up the bottoms. But yeah, I've been pretty lazy filming stuff. Um, we've just been flat out trying to get stuff done and like it's been really, really hot here. It's the middle of summer in Australia at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's probably not a great idea to haul out because it is freaking hot. It's been sweaty, hard work. Like we've been crashing daily where we just like can't deal with it anymore. Heat stroke, Michael passed out for like four hours in the middle of the day yesterday at like vital point of getting things finished. So. I was smashing out the jobs and he was working till about eight last night trying to get it all done. We had a few beers last night to say farewell to the yard. We are getting ready to head south and get back to Sydney, see family and friends and hope that the border 
doesn't lock us out for too long. We were in a mad rush to get the bottom coat on where the stands were before going back in the water. So our mate Evan offered to film. A rare moment where we have a personal cameraman and we're both in the shot. Quick Mark, we can't get in the shot, we never get shots together. Do the old silent creeper walk. Don't look at some of the dodgy shit. Thanks, Evan. <laughs> no How out of focus is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thought that counts, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> With the keels touched up, it was time to splash. We were being launched on the high tide so we could drive straight out of the creek after launching and Evan would be following us again so he didn't hit the bottom. Check that through hull. First up. No fenders on this side? I'm going to go straight to that side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You going to hold us there while we check the through holes? Turning the favour of them. Already getting crap walk around it. Crap can. Crap can. I don't know. Okay. You want to just go? done this before. It's pretty event uneventful which is always good. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. A few little things that we could have What? Ah oh, just those little we've got a few little bubbles in the antifowl that it's annoying. Evan had them too. So I don't know. It's probably the heat. Didn't key it up enough or what story is. Uh, ask Kenny. He's a bloody hot. Bloody hot and looking forward to getting out on the water and uh, heading south and seeing our family and friends, which is the next challenge. 500 knots to go, Michael. Five? Four? Oh, I don't know, five, something yeah. like that. Long, Show long. Up. Anyway, we're going to go pay the bill and uh, get out of here. Join us next episode as we kill some time on the Gold Coast while waiting for a weather window to go south. We're here to find some pippies, so we've just trekked over to the ocean side. 
huge. That's heaps oh. better than what we We've literally walked 100 meters. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. woo All right, morale is high, everyone's digging like crazy. Found a pippy hot spot. <laughs> Let's see. Hi everyone. Good night guys. Just a quick reminder that we do have merch available now up on our website. Grabbing some gear is a really good way to support the channel. So if you're keen on keeping the wind in our sails, head over to sailingpropower.com and grab some merch. So we'll put a link up here or up here somewhere. Uh, for some reason the site's not showing up in the Google search just yet, so it'll it's... be in the description as well. Cheers for watching everyone and a huge thanks to our patrons for making these videos possible. Thanks guys. Cheers. See ya. Alright, let's try and be a little bit tidier this time. No. <laughs> oh. That just slipped out of my hand. What's going on there, Michael? <laughs> this bloody drongo. <laughs> I'm the biggest fan. <laughs> hey, it looks like a tree snake. Watch out, I don't think that is a tree snake. I wonder if he was in the tender. Michael died. I don't think you'll get him with that. He's just gonna be on it now. Crazy, eh? Mm. This is the best part about being in the yard. There's dogs everywhere! <laughs> Banjo! He's like, no, nah, I just want to go somewhere now. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> Where are you going? It's too hot out here. Banjo, what are you doing under there, puppy? Lots of crab walking. <laughs>